Hey Challengers, this is Miss Mary Jo coming to you for our next week's lesson. We are in our Discovery of Grace book, so go ahead and get out your Discovery of Grace book. And uh, we are on uh, the Unit 4.5, page 222 in your books. It is called Discovery of Faithfulness, so let's go ahead and see what our verse is this week. It is Colossians 1.10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So let's go ahead and study the scripture so that we can understand what it means and apply it to our everyday life. The first part of Colossians 1.10 is that you may walk. So let's go ahead and see what walk means. Remember how we learned that the Bible divided up in the Old Testament and the New. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament is written in Greek. And sometimes uh, different words can have different meanings depending on the language. Like um, the big blue sky means gravy in Swedish, while roof means robbery in Dutch. So, of course, we wouldn't think of robbery here in America meaning roof. Um, so it's very important that you study the scripture uh, as it related to the language that it was written in. So, if you look it up on that website I've shown you before, it is this word right here in Greek, and it means I walk, conduct my life, live, behave. So, it's the way you live your life. It's the way you act when you're at school, around other people, and when you're at home, when you're what you decide to watch on your tablet, and how you treat your brothers and sisters and your parents. All right, so let's see how we are to behave in um, our life. The next part of Colossians 1.10 is worthy of the Lord. All right, so he's asking us to behave worthy of the Lord. So let's see what the word worthy means so we can understand this better. Let's see, the word worthy means becoming. It's viewed as becoming suitable because recognized as fitting, having worth that matches actual value. You're becoming, that's what it means, worthy, becoming. And what are you becoming like? What does the verse say? of the Lord. Okay, so how do we learn how to be like the Lord? By reading your Bible, and that's what we do every week when we go over our lesson. All right, so let's see what the verse says why. Why are we to become like the Lord? The next part of the Colossians 1.10 is fully pleasing to him. It's a pleasing, willing service. It's, it pleases God when he sees us wanting to um, learn about him and become like him. Will we ever be perfect? No, never. I know this weekend is Mother's Day weekend. Have you ever made breakfast for your mom and brought it to her in bed? Did you do it because she demanded you to or because you had to? No, you did it because you love her and you appreciate everything she does for you every on a daily basis. And you were saying thank you to her. And will she be upset when she goes down in the kitchen and see the mess you made? Hopefully not, depending on the size of the mess. But however, she knows that you made the breakfast from your heart and that you did it because you love her. So she's not going to be angry about that. And God, we have had a transformation. When we ask Jesus into our heart, we become a new creation. Remember that verse we discussed? We were transformed. And we know that the Bible tells us what he did for us, and we love him, and so we want to become more like him. So, how can we become more like him? Well, let's go back to our verse and see what it says, Colossians 1.10. It actually has two parts, uh, how we think we can become like him. The first one is being fruitful in every good work. Remember last week, we learned about how he gave us gifts and talents, and that's how we show his love to other people, is how he's created us. Ephesians 2.10 says, God, good works that he has prepared in advance for you. He's created you for a purpose before you were even born. He knew what he created you for. And it's not a burden. Remember how we discussed it's something that you enjoy doing. He created you for a purpose. You don't have to feel like you have to please God, and you have to do this, and you have to do that. It comes from love. Matthew 11.30 says, my burden is light. Let's go ahead and read that. 
Go ahead and get out your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 11. You can pause this video if you need to get your Bible. It's very important that you use your Bible whenever you uh, are studying scripture and, and going over your lesson. And it helps you get familiar with where the books of the Bible are located. All right, Matthew 11, we're going to read just 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So it comes from love. He's not a taskmaster master and trying to make you do everything the way he wants you. He created a certain gift and talent in you that you love to do, and you love him, and you use that to show his glory. All right, so let's see what the second part of the verse is on ways that we can uh, please God. Colossians 1.10, the second part, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing. Let's see what that means. To make, to grow. To grow. And what are you growing in? The knowledge of God. You know, when you were born, you started out with a bottle, and you started getting your nutrition from a bottle. But you don't drink from a bottle now, because as you grew, you got teeth, and you got more solid food. The Bible says in Hebrews 5.14, but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So the same with when we start to learn scripture in the Bible, we are growing little by little. And that's how we learn is from reading the Bible and then you learn to do what's right versus wrong, distinguish good from evil. It comes from the Bible and studying the Bible. First Peter 2.2 2 says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So when you first become a Christian and you ask Jesus into your heart, he wants you to, you know, learn about love and how much he loves you. That is all about love because that's how you grow up in his word. He wants you to be rooted and established in love. So like a tree, a tree starts to grow the roots underground before you even see the tree growing up top. And the bigger and the deeper the roots are underground that you can't see, the stronger that tree becomes and the taller that tree becomes and it can withstand any storm or problem that comes across it. Just like in our Christian life, when we, deep inside of us that nobody else can see, only you, if you place in your heart the, the love of God and you know how much he loves you and you don't let nobody take that away from you, then the stronger your relationship is, the stronger your Christian life will become because you know that no one can take that love away from you. He tells us that in his word. And then any time a problem comes across, you're able to withstand that problem a little easier because your roots are so are deep in God's love. So let's go back over our verse one more time. Colossians 1.10 That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So what have you learned from our verse today? All right, we've learned how to conduct and live our lives every day in the ways that we are learning. When you study your Bible and through Awana lessons and when you study with your parents or when you learn scripture. And we've learned that he doesn't force us, that we must choose. We've learned that we are to use our gifts he's given us in order to show his love. I love the verse in Acts, it's chapter 10, verse 38. It said Jesus just walked around doing good. We have to learn how to understand God's love for us and his grace and mercy. We'll never get it completely right. And to use the gifts and talents he's given us to do the good works on this earth. To show his love and glory to others that don't know him yet. So that we can get them to want to know him. And we are to continue to study scripture so that we can grow and become more mature in Christ. 
All right, our challenge for the challengers this week our verse tells us to conduct our lives worthy, becoming like the Lord. So I want you to go ahead and Google this week characteristics of God and get a piece of paper and write them down. And then during the week, I just want you to try to take a, two of those characteristics and live it out. And um, when your leader calls you next week, just tell them ways that you think that you lived out God's characteristics and how God acts and how the way you acted and what you did. Our bonus question for the week is, in your lesson on page 224, at the bottom of the page, it tells you to read 2 Chronicles 31, chapter 31, verses 20 through 21. I want you to read that this week, and then when your leader asks you the bonus question, it's going to be, where did Hezekiah serve God? So find out where he served God. You know, for us, we're serving God in the United States. And the question is, where did Hezekiah serve God? So I am so happy to be able to talk with you. Can't wait to see you again. God bless you. And uh, have a great week, guys.